All right, guys, so here's the third and final video. I'm going to show you now how to make your cut list. So the cut list is uh, unique in that we have to take apart our whole project. So what you're definitely going to do is do a file save. Make sure you saved all your work. So you've got your 3D and 2D all done. Okay, and the trick here is we're going to do a file save as now. And we're going to call this bookshelf, bookshelf with overhang and add the word cut list. So what I did is I made sure I saved everything to the original file. And then I do a file save as and save it now as the cut list. So I'm going to hide my make 2D layer, get rid of all of that. I'm going to activate the birch plywood layer. I'm going to hide the dimensions layer. And I'm going to hide the Luan layer. We don't need that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer, and I'll call it plywood sheet. Okay, so a sheet of plywood is 48 by 96 inches long. Okay, so I'm looking at um, this project here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, at really anywhere you want to make it, I'm going to make a line 96 inches long. 48 inches wide, back down to 96, hit enter, and all the way back to point. This is going to represent a sheet of plywood. Now what I have to do is try to take all these pieces and basically lay them onto this and Tetris this project out. So if I were to just start dragging pieces here, okay, and I take this one and I drag it here, this could work, but the only thing is that the grain on plywood goes from the top to the bottom across the length of the board, across the eight feet. And this project would look kind of strange if the grain was going up and down across these pieces. So I'm going to just undo, undo, and undo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have this piece of plywood going sideways. So I'm going to rotate it. All right, so rotate 2D. It's a center of rotation. It's going to be my end point. Angle the first reference point, so anywhere straight up. Second reference point, just lay it down and drag it up and out of the way. All right, I think we're ready. So I'm going to take the top piece right here, and I'm going to move it. I like to use the Move tool for this. So move. Point to move from, my endpoint snap is on. I'm going to move it from its corner right here. And I'm going to move it all the way to the corner of the plywood board. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Text tool, I'm going to label this top, and I'm going to make my text go right here. Sometimes your text will disappear, and that's just because if you look at what's happening, you will start seeing sometimes your pieces are floating above this, this, this plywood line outline, and the text is underneath it. You can just drag the text up. It's okay if everything's floating. We're just really, we really just want it for its two-dimensional representation. So... I have my top, and I'm going to dimension it. So I know I have a dimension layer here, but I could just use the plywood sheet layer for my dimensions. And you can dimension any way you want. You can go on the outside or on the inside. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to dimension from here to here. So my top piece is 12 inches by 48. Great. OK, let's take the shelf. Now, if you don't know what piece this is, is this the top shelf or the bottom shelf? It's a top shelf. Okay, so I'm going to move it. You got to zoom in for the accuracy. Endpoint snap. I'll maximize my top view and I'll bring it all the way right to here. Okay, so I'll label it top shelf. Hit OK. Put it right here and then dimension it. Excellent. Okay, and now let's go back to the 2D, uh, the uh, 44 viewports. Take this one, move it. Okay, I'll move it from its endpoint right here. Well, actually, let me do it endpoint right over here, and I'll move it to the end of the other board there. All right, this is the bottom shelf. So label it bottom shelf and. I will place that right up here and dimension. So 
from here to here, end to end, it's 12 inches. And now I'm gonna actually break a dimensioning rule and dimension right on top of the part because I don't have any other place to dimension it. Okay, there's the bottom shelf. Okay, this piece is my bottom. I'll move it from end to end. Text tool, I'll just delete the, delete the word shelf, make it bottom. Okay, and dimension, okay, from end to end. Just be really careful you're getting the ends because if you mess these up, you're gonna mess up your cuts. All right, again, I don't need a width dimension because it's they're the same width or depth, it's 12 inches. Okay, and then now for these, this is total, this is different. I want you, you're gonna have to rotate these with the dados facing up. So the same thing, we're gonna rotate it, rotate 2D, center of rotation is gonna be an end point in the front view. All right, I'll maximize the front view so you can really see what's happening. Angle of first reference point, any straight line, okay, or the end point of it, and we're just gonna lay it down on its back. All right, so I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna move it from end to end, label it. All right, so this one was the left side. So I'll do L side. If you have room to write left side, that's great. But I'm just gonna do left side, I'll put it right here. And for this one, dimension, overall. Okay, I'm actually gonna do my overall up here because I'm gonna plan to dimension my dados. I'm gonna have to cut the dados on the table saw. So what I ask you to do for the dados is pull a dimension from one edge to the bottom and you can pull another edge over here and just the more information, the better. Okay, so I could set my fence to 10 and a half inches, cut this dado and then um, set my fence to either 22 and three quarters, cut this data, or flip the board around and set it to 11, <clears throat> cut this data. All right, and then we're gonna take this one, rotate it, rotate it the other way, from end up, lay it down, take it, move it from end to end. Now, honestly, this would be great. You could do it this way. We have a nice piece of scrap here. But you could also go like this. Whoops. I'm going to rotate this all the way around. So I'm going to rotate it from here. I'm just going to rotate it all the way around. And now if I move it. Okay, when I see this, I get very happy because I could just cut this larger rectangle. So... I could cut a 24 inch piece, really 24 and an eighth, and then cut these two dados at the same time. Sometimes it's a, it's a, it really helps out, but you don't have to do it. We can figure it out. Um, you can, I, I would actually, either way is fine. So again, you could leave it like this, or you could do it and just keep continue to Tetris out the parts and we could just dimension these. So um, this is the left side, the, the right side. I hope this is making sense. Right side, okay. And you can even not dimension it because it's the same as this. It's just a mirror image, okay. So, um, but if you if you want to dimension it up, okay. It it is a proof, but. 34 and a half, 34 and a half. All right, the whole project's done. It's great. It will take up um, less than one sheet of plywood. We still have room for other people's wood that we can get out of your waste. And the cut list, basically, I can just rip this, set the fence at 12 inches, make this long cut, and then you can cut this and cut this these parts off with the track saw, 12 inches, you cut these with the track saw, and then we could just get these out and we're minimizing waste and maxim minimizing cuts. You have to have a cut list. So we'll print this out same way, file print, okay, and then print it out. All right, thanks for watching. Um, by the way, if you wanna do a landscape, let's try this 11 by 8.5 and 